Ever wonder what it's like to buy a piece of land to live on in your RV or trailer? We just bought our new home base and we would like to show you how to overcome some obstacles that you may face along the way if you're trying to find that little slice of paradise. As always, we will do our very, very best to get it done in less than 101 seconds. What is up you guys? It is Lauren and Sam. We are the trailer couple dedicated to that simple life and it is another wonderful day to live in the burrito on our brand new piece of land. Brand spanking new. Recently we bought a little over half acre of land in South Carolina with the intentions of living on it full time in our 27 foot trailer. Now this took us about three months to find exactly what we were looking for but we got it. Now this was not an easy process and many of you actually reached out to us asking us you know what was it like? Every city, county, and community has different regulations on what you can and can't do on land. We are not allowed to live in our trailer full time within city limits, so this actually narrowed down our search to just looking at county land. Um, but you also have to be mindful too, sometimes within county land there are covenants um, within certain neighborhoods and areas that also don't allow for you to live in mobile living arrangements as well, so you have to keep that in mind. So we figured we'd make a video on this, detailing some of the obstacles that we faced, kind of the timeline that we went through. Let's get this thing going, so go ahead and put 101 seconds on the clock and let's simplify it. So we started with our checklist of must-haves. Now this checklist included everything that we knew we needed on the property, and this included electric, some form of water, whether that was well or city water, and then some form of sewer, whether that was a septic tank or city sewer. We also knew that we wanted to be within 20 minutes of both of our works. We wanted a little bit more than one acre of land just so that we had some elbow room and then also some room to do some fun projects and kind of develop the land a little bit. So our search started here. This is the first plot of land that we are looking at and we are going to call it the Bougie land because it's right by a gated community, but it is in county land. It's a little bit further from our clinics than we would like. All right, so we definitely liked that one a lot. Um, it was super far out of town though. It would be like 45 minutes or so with traffic. It's still not that private. Like I feel like we were out there in the country, but we weren't in the country. There were houses like button right up next yeah, to us. And the lot wasn't super deep. So we would have to put our trailer kind of right up on the road. And the road coming in is a, I would say a busier road because of that gated community that's right yep. by it. So not completely checking it off the list, but not completely sold on it either. So we really liked this first piece of land. It kind of had the off factor. It was very beautiful, but it was a little bit further out. The commute would have been pretty long, probably 45 minutes each each way. Um, it also wasn't quite as private as you would have liked. There were neighbors kind of right on top of you there. So this leads us to talk about accessibility. Certain pieces of rural land may not even have roads in, or they may have what are called easements. And an easement is when you have to get permission from someone else to cross their land to access your own. So this helped us make a decision pretty quickly that we didn't want a piece of rural land that required an easement in order to access it. Accessibility is huge, and there is very, very cheap land out there, right? but some of that land, like Lauren was saying, you can't even access um, without crossing someone else's property. So this first piece didn't have an easement to get to it, but um, accessibility was kind of a thing. The commute was kind of a thing. So we decided to keep looking, um, which leads us to our next piece of property. Okay, so we are on our way to look at property number two. We are going to affectionately call this one the concrete slab because from pictures on Zillow, it looks like it's got a concrete slab that we could roll the trailer up onto and it's got full hookups on it already. Which we are really excited about. Which is exciting because then we don't have to worry about it. Um, it also looks like it's four acres. Only two of those acres are livable though. And it's going to be roughly a 25 minute commute to and from work. Okay, so we just got done looking at the concrete slab property, which was nice. The concrete slab was nice. The views were really, really nice. Yeah, we had some real nice trees on there. Um, it was really low elevation. There's two acres that were like pretty much marsh, like straight mud, mm -hmm. very unusable. Um, the other two were probably, I think the elevation on that was about three feet, um, which again, totally in a flood zone. Definite downside though was the condition of the uh, utilities. So we thought that they had existing utilities already in place, but the power was at least 60 feet away. There were some poles that you'd have to run from. So that would be pretty expensive. 
there wasn't a septic tank uh, on site and obviously there's no city sewer that far out so that's just another expense so not completely sold but i think we're headed in the right direction of things that we're looking for but sam and i really liked this piece of land it was kind of tucked back a little bit further so it was more private the view was outstanding and had some really beautiful oak trees on it as well but the conditions of the utilities were a bit unknown um so let's talk about utilities on our land currently we have a well a septic tank and electric on the property and the fact that i was already installed it saved us so much money and so much time on the front end electricity is pretty much a necessity unless you have a really nice solar setup or you plan to run your generator full time, which we don't really recommend. Please call the power company ahead of time. See how much it would cost to run electricity from previously existing power poles to your side of land. If you have lived in a house in the country in the past, you're probably pretty familiar with septic tanks and well water. So it's no different for RVs. If you're living out of town, the accessibility to city sewer and city water is very limited. You most likely will have to look into digging a well, putting in a septic tank, and this can get very expensive. You have to get a perk test before you get a permit. You have to get a permit before you put in a septic tank. So all this takes time and all this takes money. So this leads us to a little plot of land that we like to call Tiki Island. And trust us, you will wanna stick around to hear about Tiki Island. Shaka. We just pulled up to spot number three, which we are calling Tiki Island. Mostly because from the pictures and from what we have heard, there is a lot of stuff on this land, like some other trailers and a shed and a drawbridge that goes out to an island with a Tiki Island. There's a pond and it yeah, looks amazing. Okay, so we are just leaving Tiki Islands, and it was a very cool piece of property, um, but would be a lot of work, don't you agree? We love doing projects, but there is so much There's junk. There's a lot of stuff. There's probably four or five abandoned trailers, um, a few structures and some sheds that need to be taken down, but it could be really cool. I mean, the drawbridge and the pond, I don't know, would be fun. There would be some cool stuff you could do with it. So this brings us to our next point of not feeling like you have to settle when it comes to land. Trust us, we know it well. Looking for land for an RV or a trailer can feel really frustrating and limiting at times um, because you feel like you find an option and then you actually can't put a trailer or RV on that plot of land. But stick with your checklist. If we had gone with Tiki Island, Sam and I both agree that it would have fit some of the things on our checklist, but not well, right? We would have had to do lots of dirt work. It was in a flood zone. There was lots of stuff on there we would have had to move, um, lots of structures we would have had to either take down or build back up. It was just gonna be a lot of work and not the best use of our time. Lauren and I do things ourselves, we like projects, but we actually got a quote to see how much it would cost to clean this up, and it was $20,000 to move all the trailers off the land and to clean up the site. Again, don't settle, stick with your checklist. Sam and I are really glad we did because it led us to this next option here. So this brings us to the final property, and this is the last one we looked at, and it's also the one that we bought. Uh, we're headed to look at another piece of land that we are calling Marshy Paradise. Uh, it's county land. It sounds like there is a trailer on it before, which means that there are hopefully full hookups that are in good condition, but we'll see once we get out there. Um, but it's got marsh views, so that'll be kind of cool. So we really, really like this one. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> um, the neighborhood was nice. It's close to kind of the city area and some nice running trails, and it was good. There are lots of Plus is about this property and full hookups. full hookups. Full hookups. Which are great. Now we don't know if they all work perfectly, but that's future problems for Lauren and Sam. There is a well, it looks pretty new, and a septic tank. Haven't dug it up yet, but I see where it is, I think. Um, and then electrical hookups. There is a pedestal um, on site, so there's definitely a previous RV that was here. Mm -hmm. um, and it is county land, so we're really excited about that. And as Sam mentioned, this is the plot of land that we got. After some negotiations, we were able to make the deal and are very, very happy with our purchase. It's a little bit on the small side with it being a half acre instead of the acre or more that we were looking for, but it has everything else that we were looking for. It's got privacy, it's got great views, it's got oak trees, which Sam loves. Um, it's got full hookups on the property already. 
What else am I missing? It's not in a flood zone. It's not in a flood zone, which is huge as well. And it's under budget. We are very excited to be here and we are excited to get the opportunity to share our experiences with you. If any of you all are considering buying land for your RV or your trailer, um, again, we hope that this video helps to give you a little bit of guidance into how we navigated the project and hope it gives you some guidance into how you can best navigate it and save you a little bit of time down the road. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Drop them in the comments below. We're here and we're happy to help. Otherwise, um, I think that's it. That is it. And we'll plan on seeing you guys next time.